nodes. The thing that basically everyone I talk to who is thinking about switching to DaVinci Resolve is scared to because they're so used to layer-based editing that nodes just look scary. In this video, I wanna give you the most basic level understanding of how nodes work, how you should use them, and why you don't need to worry about creating complex node trees right out of the gate. But I will say, if you do enjoy this video and you want to learn more, maybe you're new to DaVinci Resolve, maybe you just want to learn more in-depth stuff, I do have a membership class over on my website that teaches DaVinci Resolve both for iPad as well as the desktop. If you want to learn more about that, check out the link in the description below. But let's get to the video. All right, so let's talk about nodes, which of course we need to access by jumping into the color page. So if you've never paid attention to the color page before and you want to learn the ins and the outs, remember I do have a course on learning DaVinci Resolve, both for the iPad and the desktop, both of which I go through talking about color grading nodes and explaining this whole layout. If you want to learn more about that, check that out in the link in the description. But for now, we're specifically talking about these little squares up here. So most people are used to layers and I have Photoshop opened up here, but if you work in Premiere, After Effects, uh, Final Cut, any of those other types of programs, they are layer based. And it simply just means we have our layers down here and whichever one on top is most important or most apparent. And if I turn that off, I'm gonna see the red layer, turn that off, see black, and you get the idea. And of course it's not as simple as that because not all effects and layers are 100% opacity, right? So if I take this blue layer, and I make it, you know, 50%, we're going to get purple because, you know, blue and red are essentially mixed together. This blue layer is only at 50% opacity. Um, so if you think in this way, there is an importance to which layers go where. You're, if I want text to be on top of this, I am not going to place that below everything else because I'm not going to see it and it's not going to work out well. If you do this with video effects, you're not gonna see that effect or it's not going to uh, work the correct way. So nodes do have an order of importance as well. Think about rotating layers like 90 degrees. So on the left, we have what's called our in and out on the right, very similar to how you edit. And so by default, you're always gonna have this one node right here. And then if you hit option or control, if you're on a PC, you can add a new node or you can right click, add new node, and you'll see a bunch of different types. We're not gonna go into every single type because that's a little too advanced for this video. I just wanna talk about adding nodes in. Now there are a million opinions everywhere here on YouTube or just in person if you talk to colorists about how many nodes you should have and should you add multiple effects to one node or create a different node for everything. And you know, I sit on the opinion of uh, a little bit mix of both. You don't need a million nodes to, uh, you know, make a good image or anything. Like for my stuff here, honestly, I'm probably only going to use two or three maybe. And so the first thing I'm going to do is actually on my last node is where I put a LUT. And I've been experimenting around, but I really like this Motion VFX MLUT Classy. And there's this toned chic one right here that I really just like. And then what I'm going to do is go back to one of my earlier nodes. I'm going to actually do my corrections because you don't want to put your node first. And this is something I actually learned recently from uh, Wakazi, who's one of the most amazing uh, color artists here on YouTube. And he talked about how if you put a LUT before you do corrections, then you are actually going to crush your data that much faster. And you'll notice it in scopes and things like that. Again, kind of advanced, just know that you kind of want to put your LUT towards the end. Doesn't always mean it's the very, very last node, but for the simplicity's sake, uh, it's going to be our last node here currently. And I'm going to go back to one of these and make my primary adjustments. So I am going to add in a little bit more contrast, bring down my mids a bit, I want to add saturation. And you'll notice that every time you make an adjustment, there's these little symbols that happen. So like this grid one, that's a LUT. Uh, these are your primary wheels. These are uh, your primary adjustments. And the reason that people say you don't want to do a ton of stuff on one node is because it just makes it more difficult to then go and make changes or to turn things on and off. If I were to also 
you know, if I were to turn off this node here and add my LUT onto the same node, I can do that. I can add all my corrections in one place, but then it can be difficult to be like, oh, wait, what is, what is this node adjusting? Like what, you know, if I want to just turn off the LUT or if I want to adjust my primaries, like what's really affecting each other and so it just makes it hard and so usually the way I do it is if as soon as I change a panel I make a new node so I'm I'm in my primaries here so I'm fine with all of this being on one node I have my LUT over here if I was doing noise reduction that always goes on the very first one here so if I wanted to jump to noise reduction which this shot doesn't really need it but if I just wanted to apply just a little touch here uh, then I can see noise reductions right there got my primaries Maybe I want to, I kind of want to cool the background uh, a bit more. So for this one, I'm going to do a mask and I'm going to feather this guy out. Give myself a little bit more space. Back to my primaries. I'm going to cool this down just a, a little bit. Make the white back there a bit more white. I don't need to track this shot because I don't really move that much. Uh, and again, I just want to keep this simple. And actually the only thing I'm going to add after my LUT here is another window. And this time this is going to be my vignette. And I'm just going to, whoop, gotta invert it. And so you can see kind of the importance of the order, very similar to layers. And it just takes a little bit of playing around, a little bit getting used to it. But when you start out, just make like three nodes for a video. Don't get caught up in the 20, node node tree you know setups and stuff like just take it one note at a time and you'll see that's not that different from layers but once you start using it it's hard to go back because this in a lot of ways is more efficient again if you want to learn more you can check out uh, my davinci resolve course down in the description below hopefully this helped you guys out uh, on a basic level if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them thanks so much for watching see you guys in the next video